and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Today, I want to show you the new AWS Step Function Console to troubleshoot your state machines. If you don't know, AWS Step Functions is a fully managed service that allows you to create state machines, like you can build workflows and those workflows do different things like um, build backends for your applications or optimization of IT processes or whatever you can imagine because it integrates with over 200 AWS services and you can create things like make tasks in parallel or build retries or iterate over an array with a map and do very interesting things. If you want to know more about uh, step functions, I have a full playlist with a lot of things. So I leave you the link in the description box because in this video, I will not go into that service. I have covered it many times. So what happened? Well, the AWS team that handles step functions has renewed the console. So now it's easier to debug, analyze, and optimize your standard workflows. So I will just jump into the console and show you what was going on because there is quite a lot of things going on. So for this demo, I want to show you a couple of state machines that I have built. Uh, the first one is the order create, and this is the state machine I have built when we were building this uh, order of um, how to do e-commerce and ordering. I have done it with Eventbridge. I also have done it with state machines. I'll leave you the link down the, below so you can check how I build this, but that's not the point here on how I build this, but I will show you what is this state machine looking. So if we go open that state machine that is already deployed in the console, and this is um, the old version, this is what it is. We can see the state machine here and you can see that it's a pretty big thing. There is quite a lot of things going on in the state machine. We are, and most of these things are calling different Lambda functions by API gateway. So there are different tasks. One goes to the inventory service and get the price from an item. Then we go to the customer service and get the customer address and so on and so forth. And if something goes wrong, then we have the saga pattern as well. So we can understand what's going on. So this is one of the state machines I want to show you uh, how we can debug it and how we can analyze. So how we open the new uh, console? That's a great question. The first thing you need to do is to go to an execution inside of one of your standard workflows. So this only works for standard workflows. And then you open the execution. And in here, uh, you will see a banner that says introducing the new execution detail page. And you can basically uh, return to the old page if you don't like, or then just by toggling this thing on and off, you can uh, see the new execution page. So let's stay in the new execution page and see a couple of new things that are there. The first one is the capability of now you can copy that into the clipboard. That's always good. You can see the amount of state transitions, and this is great because the amount of state transitions means uh, it's very attached on how much you're going to pay when you're using a uh, standard workflows. You are charged every time there's a state transition. So in this case, there's 24 state transitions, but sometimes you can have hundreds of them if you have a loop. Uh, so it's important to, to know how many you're having here. And also, uh, if you're using the free tier, you have 4,000 state transitions for free every month. So having an eye on those uh, help you out. Then uh, another thing you can see here is the duration on how long the state machine uh, lasted to complete. So that's something uh, standard workflows can last for a year. <laughs> so this is an interesting uh, piece of data. Also, if you have a failed state, this is not failed, you can see the error right away. So that's something I like because before you can see that the status failed and then you need to scroll down and try to see what was going on. Now we have this box here that allows you to see the cause. In this case, it's some internal server error, some me playing with some Lambda function <laughs> that is not working. But basically, then you can uh, try to figure out what was going on there, but you can see more information. So let's go back to the succeed state and see more things. So now you will see that there is three views and these views, uh, the data was there already. So it's not like they have added new data, but they have presented different. So you can um, see it clearly and understand uh, what is going on. So the first one is the graph view. And this is the view that we are used to that we can see the whole um, execution. 
And there we can see what is the, how, how the path of execution has been. This is a successful one, so everything is green. Uh, a couple of things that have changed is when you press in each of the states. Let's press in one. Here uh, you can see more data in the inputs and outputs. So if you remove this, you can see what you saw before. That is the input and the output for each of the states. But now you can start seeing the inputs and all the parameters that are um, in the middle. And this is great when you are using the intrinsic functions of a step function to uh, filter and modify those, uh, those parameters and pass different things. So this is something that will really help you out when you are trying to pass the right data to the next state and you didn't know what was going on and where the data was going. So now you can see all the parameters that are being sent and all the different inputs and outputs uh, and the different um, things like the result selectors or what are you selecting from the response and all kind of things that are very useful. Another thing that is new here, well, the details page is more or less the same. We have this duration started after that was not there before, but uh, that's, that was kind of the same. And the definition is the same. And then we have these events and the events were available, but they were available as a whole list in the bottom of the page before. Now uh, you can see the events that are um, for this particular state. And this is very, very helpful because sometimes when you are working with these intrinsic functions and you want to parse or do something with the uh, result, like the state from like the result from the previous state and pass something, sometimes things fail and you need to see what is going on. So here you can start seeing all the different inputs when the task started, then the task was the schedule and what that means. And then when the task started, what happened? And the task says seed, and you can start seeing uh, like the different responses that were around. And when the task exit, what were the outputs? So you can see all the different uh, intermediate flows of these JSON objects that are moving around that will help you to make better decisions. So this is the graph view. So it's a mix of what we had before and packaged different. The table view is more of the same. And here I like this view a lot because uh, now I need a bigger screen uh, because you can see basically the same steps, but in the graph view in here, we have a loop. So this is a loop. Wait, check if the delivery is going on and then deliver. And we cannot see how many times we have gone through this loop. So in the table view, you can. So you can see here is like uh, wait, wait, wait. So in this case, we wait for 15 seconds. And in some cases we might have waited for longer. So now you can see this information right in front of you. It's there and you can see um, each, each of these iterations. So this is like the task and all the different events that have executed in that particular order. And you can see again, the same information, the inputs, the details, the definitions and the events as you see before. You can also see the uh, duration of each of the events of all the, the different states. You can also see in the timeline where they sit. So here you can see uh, which chunk of the timeline they take. So that's an interesting uh, thing to, to check. Also, uh, you can see the timestamp when it happened and when it started. And then finally, we have the event view. And here we have the same table that we used to have at the bottom of the page, just sorted out a little bit more uh, clear. So here we have all the different states and these are 85 events. And we can see that there are all the, it doesn't mean the state transitions. It means like all the different uh, events that happen and one state transition can have multiple events like the task enter, the schedule, the start, the succeed and exit. So depend on what kind of state you have, you might have different types of uh, events. And in here you can see everything in a list and you can see the resources and you can go and check what is going on and you can check the APIs that were executed. And when you open any of these, you can see again, the inputs and outputs for each of the events. So this is very, very helpful. So let's see, for example, an error and see what is going on. So here we have an error with a 400, 500. 
So now we can basically open this and click in that state and we can uh, see that there is the, the API was called and then we can start seeing that, oops, there is an error. And because this is an API gateway, we don't get much logs than that, but well, that's how it works. And then in the events, we can also see that the task failed here and we can see that there was an error 500. If we go to the events, we can see that it failed here and we can uh, again see the details on the error. And if we go to the table, we will see that there is only one invocation, one, one event, one state, and it failed and it took all the timeline. So this is uh, one thing. Let's see if we have some different errors. No. So another thing that they uh, did was to improve the map. So if you don't know what maps are, usually let's look at this uh, state machine. Basically what it does, it uh, creates an array, in this case, an array of messages, and then it uses the map functionality that the step function has to process every message the same way, but it goes through the array and process the message. So this is something really cool from uh, state uh, step machines. So you can, with almost no business logic, process an array in a parallel way, and it's super fast. And then you can gather all the results at the end. So now with maps, what you can do, you can see them. Uh, we can open this up, and I have the new execution page enabled. So you can see here all the, the, the processes. So there were two iterations, there were two messages. So I can see, uh, sorry, there were three, it starts in zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can see the different executions and we can access them from the graph view. So we can, because these are in parallel, so it's kind of hard to uh, see them in a graph, but in this case, we can uh, go to the iteration zero and we can see the details and inputs and outputs for each of the iterations. So, and in the table view, we can see them as nested because these are in parallel. And again, we can see the different, um, the different things got going on. And in the uh, event view, we see everything like bloop. <laughs> so it's harder, harder to read. But in this case, I think the graph view and the table view provides so much better visibility on what is going on with the maps. But before we only had the event view and it was very, very hard to read and to understand if all the iterations were doing what they should be doing. And that's it for me today. It's a video I want to show you this because this is very useful and this is a nice rebound from the step functions because we love step functions. We want to do more with step functions and having a better console is always good. If you want to know more about serverless, don't forget to like and subscribe and all those things. And I see you next week with another episode of Uba. Ciao, ciao.